just want to show you guys my kick-ass uh, cigarette holder. I know, it's kind of arbitrary, but whatever. Uh, I want to talk to you guys about Zone. And this is uh, probably a hangover from my former communist affiliation. But there's all these people who talk about free Tibet, free Tibet, you know. And it just it strikes me as odd because Tibet, uh, when the uh, when the Dalai Lama left, when the communists came, it was in the early 50s. The uh, there were more operating monasteries in Tibet alone than the entirety of Western Europe at the height of the Middle Ages. It was run by by monks and they had such rules as uh, gouging eyes, uh, punishments as gouging, uh, gouging, gouging eyes out, amputation, decapitation, starvation, strangling, things like this for various crimes. You know, it's not the uh, nice peaceful Buddhist country that it people try to make it just like Bhutan. Bhutan's a dictatorship and celebrities like to go there they're the only ones that can get in and get out as a censored press. When Tibet, when uh, Tibet was ruled by the Dalai Lama, women weren't educated. There were no public schools. Uh, the, uh, the peasant class lived in grinding poverty. Now, yeah, it's still a poor country today. But when the communists came, they gave equal rights to everyone. They got rid of all the draconian laws. Um, People in Tibet now have hot and cold running water. Uh, people are completely equal. Uh, it's modernized. It's a lot better. And communists brought them all. Communists brought them all that. Equal rights, women's rights, education, basic needs like uh, running water, electricity. These were all brought by the communists. And while well, you might think communism is bad, and Okay, but the Dalai Lama is, is not as peaceful as he thinks he is, or as he, uh, he puts on. Uh, he, the CIA funded guerrillas that he knew about, his guerrillas actually, to take back Tibet. Warriors to go start a war in Tibet, take it back. Uh, there's also in India on the border. The, place in India and Nepal where his exiles live and there's a competing idea maybe this other guy is the incarnation of the Dalai Lama and not Rinsinga Yatso or whatever his name is the man who we currently call the Dalai Lama and anybody who opposes the Dalai Lama they print they put a picture of their name they print their work schedule where they live and all of their family members in the uh, the newspapers and they, uh, many of those people are killed, uh, maimed, tortured, blown up with bombs. And when the Dalai Lama was asked about this, he said, oh, this is all lies. This is all, this never happens. It's hard for me to believe that he doesn't know this and he isn't directing it. It would be like bishops of the Catholic Church doing stuff in the Pope. Oh, I don't know. Eh. And it's just, it's been going on for a long time and systematic. So these people, these white Westerners with their free Tibet signs, they didn't have to live under, a, they didn't, they weren't born into a country run by a religious dictatorship. Yet they want the communists out. You know, that was, they came in and they liberated it from religious tyranny. Oh yeah, communism might be the best form of government, but consider Cuba. Cuba had a uh, a three percent literacy rate when Batista was in power and the CIA was backing them. Uh, again, no sanitation either, only for the rich places. No public works. No uh, hot and cold running water. Two years after. Uh, after Castro came to power, 
you had something like a 97% literacy rate because everyone had to learn how to read. Everybody has to go to school. Public schools are uh, mandatory there. You have, uh, again, you have hot and cold running water to almost every, every village. Now it's not a paradise, but think of what type of, what type of position you're in when the communists are the ones who are giving you the just laws, when it's the communists who are bringing you civilization, when it's the communists bringing you freedom. How bad was Tibet? They said, oh, well, they, they lived in their way, and that's, that's how they did things, and they should, should uh, America have supported them in, in being isolated? And does America really care about that, or do they just want to get back to the communists? Now that America is friendly with China, and China is basically not, it's not Maoist anymore. It's definitely not Maoist. Actually, Maoists are outlawed there. there there's actually Maoist rebels fighting. Um, although they still have Mao's picture up everywhere, it's not, there's no, it's, uh, it's called, it's state, state capitalism, basically, state-sponsored capitalism. They've been moving away from it, but they're not, you know, they're not giving up the, their, you know, the title of, uh, of communists, their titular communists, basically. So, I just want you guys to think about that. Now, I know some people, oh, Tibet should be free, <clears throat> but it shouldn't go back to having the Dalai Lama as, as their uh, su supreme, unquestioned ruler with all these draconian laws. Tibet's going to be free. It should go to, to a demo, uh, something democratic, which they didn't have before. This wasn't a free nation that got invaded. This was a, this was a dictatorship. This was a kingdom that got invaded. And uh, I don't think the communists are the evil guys that... Uh, we have made them out to be. So, I just wanted to let you guys know that. A few facts about Tibet. Uh, you can come to your own conclusions. Again, I'm no longer a communist. Um, I've been a member of the Communist Party for years now. In fact, I was only a member for about two years, and uh, that's that was Communist Party of the United States. I'd broken off to go to a Maoist one, and no longer a Maoist either. Or a Trotskyist. Kind of go through the stages when you're a communist. Kind of strange. Alright, peace.